Welcome to Sigma TV and to the executive interview series. I'm thrilled to be here at the offices of Betson Group with the CEO of Betson Group, Jesper Svensson. Thank you so much for joining us today. Thank you for having me. I'm happy to be here. I've been extremely excited to do this and to come, of course, to your amazing offices, which we'll be talking about in a few minutes. Yeah. But first of all, yeah. I want to just jump straight in there. Yeah. 2020 yes. has been an unprecedented year of immense challenges for every single person on the planet. Yeah. Now, I know that there's been, uh, we've seen a migration onto online communications, online behavior as well. Yeah. So how is that reflected specifically as you can see it within gaming? So I, I think gaming and what we work with on the digital side have got a boost out, out of that. And in, in a very challenging time for a lot of people and sitting at home, you're craving also entertainment. And we are an entertainment industry. So we have been able to provide that. We have seen a transition from offline gaming to online gaming. So digital gaming has had a really good year in a very, very challenging time. And I think it's a testament to, to the industry. It shows um, the sustainability, but it's, it's, it's an outcome of digitalization. It's, it's actually as, as simple as that. So we got the boost. So from a business point of view, it has been, it has been a good year. But uh, obviously, it has been a, a, a challenging year for everyone in the whole world in that sense though. But I'm very pleased to, to be part of an industry and, and be part of a company that in a tough time is, is delivering uh, good results. Well, I mean, that's a great story. That's the success story of 2020. And there, there are success stories. They are quite hard to come by, but I'm thrilled that you are part of one of them. Yeah. So you mentioned the offline gaming. What yes. specifically are we talking about when we're talking about offline gaming? So if, if we look globally overall, just to put it into context, I think pre-COVID it was 13% uh, roughly that was online. And so 87% offline. And then we speak about Las Vegas, Macau, uh, scratch cards in, 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 in the shop where you go and do your grocery shopping. And, lottery tickets in, in, in the street and so forth. That's still a massive part of gaming. Yeah. So, so the transition now has, has really moved forward faster this year, but it was happening. It was happening before COVID uh, as well. It was every year digital gaming was growing at a much more rapid rate than, than offline. Both online and offline has been growing though uh, throughout the years and it, I still expected to keep growing. It's an immense growth industry, but the digital side is obviously growing faster now than, than the offline uh, side. Now, I was surprised myself only in the last couple of weeks to find out that, that online gaming only made up 13 to 14% of yeah. the global gaming uh, yes. uh, entity. Uh, and I was blown away by that and because, yeah. of course, we, we see lots of prominence. We see lots of discussion about online gaming. Yeah. One thing I just want to come to you and get you, uh, just as I'm talking to you now, online gaming mm -hmm. is massively regulated. Yeah. More so. Yes. Than offline gaming. Many times, yes. And why, uh, I know it sounds like a naive question, but why is this? Because the regulation seems to be getting, becoming more and more stringent. Yeah. And, and in, uh, in infant uh, markets, so as, uh, such as South, South America's, for instance, yeah. they're bringing, it's, it's starting, the regulation's starting to come in. Yeah. But still very, very stringent. It, it, it is. So, I mean, the, the whole industry and the immense scrutin, scrutiny, but it's also, I, I think when you look at it, we, we're dealing, obviously we're dealing with money and uh, so we have to be safe as a bank and we need to follow all, all the regulations that comes with dealing with money in general in, in that sense, uh, of course. And a company like ours, we have we are getting up to 15 different jurisdictions where we have licenses and so forth. And, and we see, we see the, the, of course, you know, some commonalities between them, but so, sometimes it's not. And we're always having a, a form of a review or audit from all those things in regards to what we're doing on anti-money laundering mm -hmm. and, and all those things. And that's, that's a natural part of business, online business that is dealing dealing with money so to speak so 
So uh, the scrutiny comes, comes with that. But if you look digital, it's all so much more traceable than it is in the offline world. And that can also create um, a secure environment. Uh, because if you think about it like this, even to, to use the products online, you need to get your money online. And just to get your money online means that you need to, in most cases, have, have earned them in, in, in a good, decent way, uh, in that sense. Uh, of course, there will always be a problematic way to, to, to get your money. But I think we offer a really safe environment uh, as a, the digital offering. So it's, it's a little bit uh, of a paradox at times that we are so much more harder regulated than the offline side. But that said, offline is also a highly regulated uh, industry. Indeed, but uh, you know, you just touched on it there. That digital, uh, the digital platform is so highly regulated, yes. and also, of course, uh, alongside that, and I think a lot of people don't realise, is responsible gaming. Yeah, uh, is also very, very active and proactive. Yeah. You don't see somebody coming out of a lotto office and and having someone walk up to them and saying, "Listen, can I just ask you where the money came from to buy that ticket?" Yeah, and yeah. listen, are you okay with buying that ticket? Do we need to talk about yeah. this? But of course yeah. that is what happens all the time yeah. in the digital sphere in online gaming. Yes. Yes, no, no, you you're right and uh, and that's the reality of um, of how it works and that again goes actually back to the the, the perception sometimes it's very different from from that. But uh, the reality is that um, companies like, like ours are, are having a lot of things in place in order to follow those regulations. We have hundreds of people working with that and, and the scrutiny is very deep. And we also, I mean, we are a listed company on Nasdaq in, in Stockholm. And that also means that we, we have to conduct our business in a certain way. But not just because we are regulated overall, it's because it's the right way to do it. Then, um, in some cases, regulators can can also take it a bit too far, um, I believe, uh, and and that doesn't create the right um, safety and environment either, because it can also mean that it penalizes the ones that are actually following the regulations and getting the local licenses and so forth. Um, because if you do an over-regulation where you limit the customer or the customer experience, too much means that customers can choose to play outside of the regulation. And that is what we refer to as offshore uh, companies. And, and, and they are then don't have the local license or they don't pay the taxes. They don't go through the same scrutiny and um, doesn't necessarily adhere to the same rules that the, the in this case, serious listed uh, companies do. Well, now you mentioned perception. Yeah. there a moment ago. We're going to talk about this in a second because, yes. of course, Betson is a household name. If anybody thinks of gaming automatically, I should I should imagine one of the very first names that comes to mind is Betson. We're going to talk about That's perception good. in a second. Yeah. Absolutely, of yeah. course. We're going to talk about that in a second. Before we, want, we get there, um, I want to go back to the original question about 2020. Now, 2020 has seen a great deal of change in, in behavior, yeah. employee behavior. Yeah. Um, we're here at your offices and you've mentioned to me that a good deal of your staff are working from home at the moment. Yeah. Can I just ask you, as we move into um, an era where we're seeing our, our emergence from COVID, as we start to come out of that, yeah. how much of what we've learned from this year is going to continue with us? Are you going to keep your staff working from home because your office isn't yeah. gorgeous. <laughs> yes, no, I think uh, we will look at some sort of hybrid model for this where we uh, we will be more flexible in, in how we approach this because I think the traditional nine to five has got, uh, <laughs> it's challenging to go back to that in, in how it used to be. So, so we, will, we will find a way where we have a hybrid model for this, and um, and we have some ideas around this. We haven't communicated it yet, so I can't tell you all about it now. But I, I also think the office still has an important place. There, there is something about people getting to, together, get to know each other, develop ideas together and so forth. And I, I don't want that to to disappear in this, in this company by, by any means. But I also think um, what we have learned is that it works. You know, people have been working from home this this year, 
and it has been working really well. Over time, though, I think that uh, human interaction and um, and uh, and getting getting to to know each other on a deeper way than just you do digitally will will help the company overall. And it's also about creating a company culture, uh, which is incredibly important uh, for for any company. You can do that better when you you have people meeting each other in in person. Though. So, for us, the the way forward will not be either or, it will be somewhere somewhere in between. Well, you mentioned before yeah. that you've taken the opportunity over this COVID period yes. to renovate yeah. uh, your offices in this workspace. And I'm just going to say now, this workspace is beautiful. I, I want to play pool. Yeah. Uh, and, and you have these incredible offices. So I can imagine that, that your, sta you know, your staff, your team are, are looking forward to coming back. Yeah. I want to go back to this question where the, uh, that I mentioned before about perception. Yeah. And I gaming, gaming as we know it now, has been a relatively recent emergence as an yeah. industry. And right from the outset, um, companies within the industry, yourself included, were perceived as the place to go and work if you want to have a great time. You work hard, but you play really hard. Yeah. And as we're sitting in a, an amazing uh, office, a, a, a relaxing room, lunch area, uh, I can imagine why people would think that. Is that so? If you if you want to play hard, is is this the industry no, to be in? No, it's it's not. I would say we we work much much harder than we play, uh, and then I think I think you, you should be able to do to do both. Um, we want to create a nice environment for anyone to be in in an office environment, uh, and 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 that uh, that is important for us. If you just work looking for the play hard aspects. That's not uh, that's not gaming 2020 or 2021 or, or the future in that sense though because we are I mean we are digital companies we are quite you know young and vibrant and and all those things but extremely serious we are very technology driven and it's not at all the stamp of a a a party industry but we are an entertainment industry you know and uh, what I think what we do so much we do is around sport you can call sport a part I mean we're so connected to, to to every single sport and every single event so we're always in those settings at the same time as obviously casino online casino you draw the parallels to let's say Las Vegas and 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 the party perception out of that right um, but we we are in general online gaming are technology companies digitally focused and in forefront of of that and that is a very different environment than you know a las vegas party environment and so are you you're telling me that the perception is there's no truth in it there, there is some truth to it of course because growth industries in general um, and the digital space in general have seen an incredible growth, incredible success, and out of success comes uh, celebrations. So there has been um, historically and, and still is, you know, big parties like big summer parties, winter parties, and so forth. And 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 I think they have been standing out in many ways. But that is such a small part of what our company is and what this industry is overall, though. So. So if you're looking only for those aspects, you, you, you're actually going to be quite disappointed. Well, as you mentioned also, of course, uh, the growth in 2020 yeah. uh, and more uh, users migrating online, more ga gaming people yeah. going online, which I assume has also created a need uh, for a higher level. Yeah. of sustainability within the digital platform. Yeah. So I can imagine, and also of course, because we can't get together, yeah. I can imagine that that uh, your team have been working extremely hard this year yes. to keep up with the growth, yeah. to keep up with the demand. Yeah. And of course they haven't had the opportunity to get together. I'm assuming there's a massive party at the end of this pandemic <laughs> and I hope yes. I've got an invitation. We're, yes, <laughs> yes, no, I, I think so. Everyone deserves uh, something bit big when, when when it's possible to do it, because also being in the fortunate situation to be in a company that is expanding, it means that w we have worked really hard, immensely hard. And we also, during this year, we are recruiting a lot. We are onboarding a lot of people. And 
And we are doing this remotely and those people, they have not met their work colleagues, which is again a reason to, to have people coming into the office, right? So when this is over, I'm, I'm sure we're going to celebrate in, in a good fashion. As again, I'm going to go look for that invite. <laughs> yes, yes, you, no, you'll I'm, have it. I'm you'll have it. But, uh, but I mean, as you mentioned, it's going to be a great time, hopefully. Yeah. Hopefully, as and we're starting right now to see moves towards the end yeah. of this lockdown era, era where we will be able to meet again. You know, we've started to see vaccine, and whilst the vaccine isn't the answer to everything, uh, it is starting to, to sort of indicate. Yeah. So, I just want to ask you one last question. Um, none of us could have anticipated what 2020 was going to bring, yeah, and it's very difficult to predict what 2021 will bring, yeah. hopefully a brighter future. Yeah. But for you and for Betson Group, what are you yeah. seeing as the main goals and aims for 2021? What would make next year a good year for you? So I, I think first of all, if we take the human side first, uh, I, I think we, we start to see the light in the end of the tunnel, right? And, and everyone are eager to get back to the, the new normality, what being able to meet people and uh, you know your family travel and all those type of things so I'm, I'm really looking forward to to that and by next summer it's very likely what based on what we know today that that will will start to happen so that's that's something to be very encouraged by but I also think from a company point of view we we have so many exciting things happening next year. We are going to launch a range of new markets uh, we are going in more and more to the B2B uh, side as well. So we're going to, in particular with our sports book, which we develop in-house, so we're going to supply that as a new uh, business vertical. So, so we're really excited. We're really excited. So I would say geographical expansion and um, B2B will be very high on the agenda from, from the business side of things. And I also think what we have seen, the, the change in, in offline to online, will be sustained uh, during 2021 so so hopefully we will have a good um, a good momentum even even next year so i'm i'm confident for the next year it's it's always a, a fantastic uh, opportunity when people are positive yeah. in such a difficult year yeah. to hear a great positive message like that and and i'm thrilled for you and wishing you all the very best. Um, yes, Ms. Fenson, thank you so much for being with me today or allowing me to come to these amazing offices uh, and look forward to seeing what's happening with Betson Group next year. Thank you very much. It was really nice to be part of the show. Thank you very much indeed. Cheers.